<laughs> You're back. <laughs> okay, this is probably, like I say, one of my favourites on how it turned out, but I hope that kind of gave you an insight as well into just where things begin, you know, how things can change and how things develop. Like I say, I kind of had this idea from earlier on, and I think you can see that happen with a few of the Inktobers where I have an idea for something early on, maybe it didn't work so well, but then later on I get to revisit it and it can end up saving something. And I do quite like this texture, I think it gives it almost like a, a teddy look, I think it looks a bit like a teddy bear, and I really like that about it. And I like these little guys too. Uh, my mum <laughs> was on Instagram and christened these Squeaks and I like the name. So these are Squeaks, they're gonna appear quite a lot in the next few days, so I hope you like them. So carrying on with the Inktivity prompt list, I have, okay, for day 18, <laughs> for this one, this was Candle was the thing, or Candle Making, sorry, the last one, that was Pumpkin. Uh, the pumpkin cat, and that was, I think, creativity or something like that, making something creative. This one is candle making as a prompt. Now, uh, it was interesting because obviously we've got these squeaks here. This is one that might actually look a bit more different online when you look at it because I did play with the colours quite a lot here. You can see how much it bled as I paint painted with this one. <laughs> Get my teeth back in. <laughs> I had an idea for this and I really wasn't sure of it. It was more one of those, I need to paint something today, get something up. And so I did it at night and I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of water got the bleeding. And yeah, I ugh, I really would like to come back to this one because I think there's something quite interesting about the character. And I guess, hmm, how to say it, I'm not as big a fan of this one. And I know I keep saying this, but I don't mean it in a negative way. I think the trouble is, is I was thinking primary colours, red, yellow, blue. I haven't done it. Why not give it a go? And then I remember why I don't like it. <laughs> They're very like childish colours and I think, though this is like kind of me pushing into more childish illustration this week compared to the previous week of the Swamp Witch's story, I... It's hard because like I'm just coming up with this off the top of my head and I'm trying to think through like what it is I'm not as big a fan of. I think it's the contrast and I know I'm kind of like maybe a bit of a, <laughs> an idiot when it comes to contrast. I know that most people are like you should be more toned down, you should use lots of brown, you should use lots of grey. Everything should be muted and bright colours are terrible in art and blah 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 blah. There's like loads of rules about colour. I don't understand them clearly. <laughs> but I don't know. I really like bright colours and I think maybe this is just too muted for me. I, I don't know. I wanted it brighter. I think especially because she's a candle. Maybe she should just be brighter here. I think the trouble is, is and I'd like to hear your opinion on it to be honest. About 10 seconds before I said this is finished, I was like, maybe I should make this black. I should just use a black and then add a water around the edge and just put black as the contrast, not blue. And then had it as black, red and yellow. And I still think that might have rescued that piece for me because the contrast would have gone up. But I'd like to hear what you think. Do you think a cool tone is better? Do you think a black would have worked better? You know, we're artists here. Let's hear about like what your reasoning would be. What would you have done with this piece? Because I think, you know, it's one thing to come up with ideas and to draw them, but surely the other interest in this is to play with ideas and think about, oh, what would I have done if I'd done this again? Or, you know, it's, it's the thing of doing something for an hour a day. <laughs> you do that for an hour, you do that for an hour, and then you're done, and you don't know where it's gonna end up going. Of course, it's back this way. <laughs> so, for day 19, the prompt was sweater. Like we're wearing, we're ready, sweater weather, and I love it. <laughs> so, for in total, we had sweater, and I really, I know I've been talking about, I want this to be cute, cute overload, the cutest thing you've ever seen. So, why not make it super, super cute and have this cute little bunny? doing like, you know, just cuddling up on a pile of sweaters on a bed, getting all nice and warm on jumpers and just playing again with pattern, having these like vibrant tones. The key thing 
I think I want to mention is, say if the first week is fine liner and watercolour, the Vivia watercolours obviously, um, the second week is brush pen and the watercolour. Third week, we still trap with watercolours, but I wanted to try and bring in texture. So instead of it being about the line art, like the first half of the month, I wanted more to go into textures, like how can you layer on top of watercolour and create these nice bits of shade, or how can you create patterns and make it more focused on shape rather than shading and tone and, you know, playing with these ideas of a quilt and different layers and different patination of fabric. Like, I think that depending on the textures and depending on the mediums that you choose, you can end up focusing on different things in art and bringing out details that way. So I realised how this one turned out and how that worked out because even though I used the dreaded white pen, I don't think it was the be all and end all of this one because so many other textures were going on. I think it detracts the massive amount of attention that the white pen does on watercolours in my opinion and instead you pair it back and you look at all these textures and different feels and I really like when art has a lot of texture. So yeah, I really like how the watercolours and the pencils work together in this piece and I think it gives you that idea of it being fluffy and moving and yeah, I just like it. I like textured work. So for day 20, the prom was puddle jumping and um, <laughs> I'll take it round. So I knew I wanted to do this frog character. I drew her like a billion times. I, I could show you the sketchbook, but I'm not gonna. I'll show you the sketchbook some other time because it's long enough. But <laughs> I knew I wanted to create some kind of little froggy character with her long legs and her little dimply dots. And I wanted to give her a little like butterfly in her hair, like on a hat as like a decoration. I feel like frogs will decorate with bugs <laughs> and um, have like something natural like the mushroom as the umbrella and protecting our rabbit from the day before. I like bringing characters from earlier ones into later art. I think it's kind of fun to see, just to revisit them I guess and to bring it back. And this one again, I kind of played with the water droplets that I was talking about, but this time I went a bit more like blum blum blum, like used a lot of water and let it all like merge together. And I think it's interesting to see how it disturbed on the created a texture because that was the thing that I'm talking about again, like the texture is where I wanted to go, I didn't want to go just on tone. And I think it's interesting to try and bring in a wet tone, a wet texture into art like this where we're trying to portray rain. I think it would have been stronger if I had then also layered levels of coloured pencil, I think it could have done with more texture. but. Overall, I think for the amount of time that I'm spending on it, I thought it turned out quite nice. Just the colours are questionable, but I like the eye. I was glad that that didn't go wrong <laughs> reflection. But yeah, I thought it was an interesting piece to work on, and I hope you enjoyed it. And on to day 21. Okay, I keep rotating this book because I've got the camera set up. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Okay. So this is actually one of the favourite pieces that I made this month for me. And this was tw uh, day 21 of Inktivity and the prompt was reading. And funny enough, like I, I don't talk about it that much, but I do some teaching online. And one of the kids that I was teaching was showing me a lot of his pop-up books. He's only a young boy and it was really sweet. It was really nice to see what he enjoyed and he was telling me about them. And I was thinking about that as I was drawing this one and I was thinking about reading and I thought it would be fun to bring a character looking at this spooky book and being all afraid of everything going on and I thought that if I wanted a character to do that it would be fun to have something that's maybe more linked to the night and not being afraid of the night so I was kind of like playing with the idea of like bats or you know, just basically night animals, like owls, stuff like that. And I thought a wolf would be quite funny because, especially having the wolf look at the moon, I thought would be quite funny. As I'd drawn this first and I had this idea of like, okay, I want him to look nervous and afraid and I don't know, I just thought there was a funny idea of having those two things clash, I guess. I really liked as well working up texture in this one because I was able to create this kind of blend with the Vivias of going very 
you know, water-based with it and fading it all together. Again, learning the lesson from earlier, beginning with the lighter colour and blending into dark, I was able to create that background and then by just rubbing the pencil over it, it brought out that texture of the cold pressed watercolour paper here and you can see the grain coming through. And I think it works nicely with things like illustrating the fur on the wolf. Maybe he said fox that was a bit earlier. <laughs> and stuff like that. I mean, I, I think it's quite a nice piece personally. And I like seeing grey and yellow. I've always liked the pair of them, but very rarely use them in art. Because, like I say, I go way too contrast. But again, I really liked how this one faded together. We've got our squeaks again. And we've got this kind of little story going on. So I think this is one of my favourites. And to be honest, it would be a favourite if I'd actually been bothered to record it. But, you know, that's how it is. So... I've been showing up till now all of these, so all of the different things that I've been working on as I went, like pre-sketches, I guess, whatever we call it, preliminary sketches, I guess. So for <laughs> this one, the word was haunting, and I did preliminary sketch about 10 seconds before I drew this. I had an idea of everything I wanted to do, and the idea and the colours and everything, I don't know, it just all... Sometimes like the image comes to you straight away, sometimes you need to like spend half your day like drawing this amount of detail. But for this one, I just kind of had it, so I really just roughed out um, dimensions really, that's kind of more what I was weighing up with this drawing. I wanted to know how big I wanted the sizes to be on the page and in relation to each other, so I kind of just sketched that up first so that I would have a guide of how big do I want my ghost cat, how <laughs> do I want my cat ghost? <laughs> Is it the reverse? I don't know. But yeah, I had this whole idea of this greedy little kitten that looks like my cat Rory. He's eating all his candy and he's hoping that this ghost that's dressed up like a cat will share a bit of her candy. I kind of wanted to add this idea of these wrappers, so I was going to draw out all of this information. However, it got to a point where it's like, do you need to give everyone that every like, little bit of information? Especially when I don't think it's the key thing of this or why the image would work. I think the strength of the image is based on the white and that shading. I think that's why the image works. And these like bright colours against the grey. Having every single bit of candy detailed here. Yeah, if it was something I was working on for like the next like 30 hours, I would have done it. But when it's like taking it to two hours, you start condensing it and saying like, well, how can I show that information with less time <laughs> and give people an idea. Now I don't know how well it worked just showing this idea of broken wrappers and just bright colours and splashes of paint but I kind of liked how it turned out and I think it's not distracting you from this information which is the key. So yeah I think it's interesting with art like this where you are very time restricted and you have to think how do I tell the story without spending the next three hours drawing five billion wrappers right here on a piece of information that if I got rid of it, do you lose any of the story? You know? I don't know. I think it's interesting to think about. I'd like to know what you think as well. Like, what are some creative ways that you've shortened time during this challenge? Because I think often it's where you're most creative is when you're trying to fix issues like that and thinking about composition. It makes you think more. So yeah, I enjoyed that one a lot. That was day 22. <laughs> Again, don't even have a sketch for this one. You can tell how uh, week three was going for me a bit, can't you now? But um, again, kind of just had the idea. And uh, the one for this was pumpkin. I think it was just the prompt. And yeah, I knew I wanted to go back to earlier in the week. I wanted to go back to a black cat. I wanted something very spooky. But in comparison to day one, where I'm using yellow and orange, I wanted to this time change up orange by pairing it with green. And there's a few reasons for that, but I, the main thing was, I guess, that I wanted these pinky oranges and green to work together. I love that colour combination anyway, and I thought it would give it this like natural vibe look. And then I knew I could bring in again shapes and pattern with the coloured pencil to really like bring out the watercolour instead of it just being about the precision of watercolour and making it all work a certain way. You can layer texture on top of it and make it more of like a, a flat colour, like a flat paint. So 
Yeah, I think I think this is an interesting one. I think I would have shaded him more, made him darker, but he went anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, I like how this one turned out. I really enjoy drawing this type of thing. You've probably seen it before, but I do love doing like spirals in art and stuff like that. I like bringing the brush pen out to create these curves. I think there's something really nice about this kind of structure. I mean, it needs to be about there, doesn't it? <laughs> it's imagine to be centered. But yeah, I think this is the thing with sketchbooks, isn't it? It can be quite fun to see where an idea comes from and I enjoy this kind of drawing. So this one is probably like the closest to what I just naturally draw in a sketchbook anyway. So I was quite happy with how this one turned out. Oh gosh. Ugh, ugh. Right. I don't know, do I even have a date for this? Do I even have a drawing? No, because I hate it. Skip. <laughs> no, it, it is. This was day 24. I'm not going to skip it because I'm not a coward. <laughs> I really don't like it though. This is one of those moments where you think, oh, what a funny idea. The prompt is playing games. Let's have mice playing mousetrap. Oh, I'm so funny. <laughs> but then, and then after I'm thinking, oh, I'll go back to primary colours. I'll do what I did last time. I'll do this and I'll go very colourful and I'll go with textures. And, you know, I kind of wish I'd had the footage of this because about 10 seconds before I did something really stupid, this looked okay. But the stupid thing I did is I added water like a mad woman and look at the blur. Like, just look at how badly it went. Oh, the sadness. It was so clean, the painting before that. And I just, there was one moment here where I think I just messed up. So I added water to try and dab it off and the paint, the Vivia paint is so reactive. It just went, Pfft. No amount of that line art and drawing would rescue it. So I kind of like the composition. I'll, I'll say a positive on that. I do like the composition. I hate how the effect turned out. But, you know, I mean, I know I keep saying it, but it is a lovely project, guys. You know? <laughs> and, you know, I think as well, like, if I rip this out, what does it say? You know, for one, it says there's not 30 days in October, but <laughs> it also just says, like, I, I'm too embarrassed of like making one mistake out of a month. I mean, I know I've made more, but you know what I mean? Like, one terrible mistake out of a month. It's just what happens. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just art. Oh, it's just life. So, I guess it's just a reminder that this is my lowest level. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, we're getting like a month in. Don't worry, guys. It's nearly over. So, on a more positive note, I'm, I was gonna leave him to be on that one. Um, as you can tell, I wasn't happy about it. So I ended up sketching this one out and the last one I did for the activity prompt list was stargazing. And I had this idea of how I wanted it to be. It's kind of like inspired by, um, if you've seen Kiki's Delivery Service, the Studio Ghibli film. I was kind of imagining the scene, I think it's right at the beginning where Kiki is lying in the grass and she's looking at the day. I kind of wanted to play with that idea a little bit and have a witch that's like enjoying the night. It's like stargazing, as you say with the prompt. So I knew that I wanted to kind of play with paint. This is what I was trying to say. <laughs> play with the paint, um, but then have all the detail on the lower section of the illustration. So I knew I could just have some fun. And that was mainly because I'd had such a nightmare with the painting the day before. I, I think maybe this comes across, I hope it does, um, in my rambling, if anything comes across, that so often the day before affects how I feel the next day. And with this one, it's like, oh, you know, I messed up with the watercolour. I made like the cardinal sin of <laughs> adding water to watercolour without a plan. And it all went wrong. And instead of like shying away from it, I think it's good to kind of like revisit it. So like with the contrasting colours, it's like, no, I'm going to come back to contrasting colours. With primary colours, I'm going to do it again, even if it goes wrong. And with the watercolours, it's like, well, you know what? No, I can use watercolours. I enjoy using watercolours. I like the randomness of them. That's the thing that appeals to me. So have fun with it. Like, don't shy away from it. Come back. And I think that moments like this, like I like how this all kind of fades together and it creates this weird, like, almost galaxy in the centre. It's completely accidental. I was just like blobbing the paint on, like I began with obviously this very light, light bright colour 
and then I'm adding blue tones and purple and the colours are so vivid in the set anyway that I think it does create this really nice like almost galaxy-like effect like you'd see in like astrophotography and yeah I liked how that added and then I just kind of overlaid it with these very like graphic hmm, what's the word like like young childish like shapes just trying to keep it very simple so that it doesn't look a bit too detailed because I want it to match with this this more like textured like you know I don't know like vibrant messy childhood illustration I don't want it to look too fancy and too like delicate and pristine so I knew I wanted to try and add something to kind of like bridge the gap into that style and yeah, I quite like how it turned out. I like these kind of colour tones as well. It feels very like autumn and Halloween, I guess. So yeah, I think that was a stronger way to end the month. The month? The prompt list. <laughs> and I was happy with how it turned out. So I would say that, like, it's kind of nice to see the sketchbook together, hopefully, so you can see why I made choices like that. I hope, I hope it makes sense. Okay, so. It was the last few days, we were on day 26. I liked the prompt list, I had some random ones, but I just kind of felt like... Now to be honest, I'll just tell you the truth. I watched a video about owls and about a month before October, so like... October's not a month. <laughs> like July? July, August? I went to an owl centre near where I live. And I thought it was really interesting. They had like, I think, 26 species of owls from around the world. It was really cool, really great place. Uh, I would recommend it if we weren't in lockdown. But I was really excited by it and I was thinking about it. I was watching videos about owls because this is what I do in my spare time. And I thought, okay, five days left. Well, other than the last day, I can't count. But yeah, five days left. I want to focus on the five native owls of the UK. I want to look at that. Yeah, there were only four really, but there's five now because there is a fifth native one that we introduced a few hundred years ago. But five, okay, stop rambling. I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, right, so for day 26, I want you to focus on the long-eared owl. And the first reason I wanted to look at these is because the video I was watching was talking about these. And I always wondered what they were because it doesn't make sense for them to be ears, uh, even though it's called the long-eared owl. And they're actually not even used that way. They're called plumicorns and then got no real like scientific evidence of exactly what they're for. But I just like the word plumicorn. <laughs> and I wanted to share that with people. So I thought it'd be nice to paint them. And especially with these last few days, up till now I've kind of been using watercolour with other mediums and trying to like mix things together and create some interesting effects. With these few days I thought let's strip it back. I'm going to barely use, you'll see I used like a tiny bit of pen more to like exaggerate the eyes and create just a tiny amount of extra detail to the background. But all of this is just layers of watercolour instead. I just kind of wanted to pair back to pencil and watercolour as you can see. and play with that a bit more. I kind of like how it's a bit more expressive that face but I think with <laughs> when you're just using a big brush like I do there's certain things that you can live to you know live out. <laughs> okay so the day 27 okay near the end guys okay I'll learn to rotate the book. So we had the long-eared owl now we've got the short-eared owl. Again he's got tiny little plumicorns on his head and this one because I Again, it's the, the living lesson from the day before. I'd had this exaggerated expression of the last one, so I really wanted to emphasize that in this one because it kind of got a bit lost between the other one. So I did that by using the black pen. But again, I only really wanted to bring black into a few areas. Um, not just for the fact though that it's watercolor and I wanted to build up watercolor, but also in the natural world there isn't really many harsh blacks you know even when you think it's harsh black it's often purple or blue so i think it's quite interesting to see black in a piece of art of an animal but i think you've got to use it sparingly if you're trying to get like near something that looks like an animal <laughs> there was a sentence there at one point anyway so day 28 day 28 okay 
And this is the Tawny Owl. It looks absolutely nothing like its sketch because I went crazy with paint. And this is like watercolour and gouache. I don't know what it was, but I hadn't recorded, obviously, for a few days, as you'll see with the fact that it's taken this long for me to get to another process, which is what you'll see here. And it's like I forgot. It's like I forgot how to paint on this day. Um, so you'll see the recording. Um, I also forgot how to record because a lot of it is oversaturated, as you wouldn't believe. But you'll be able to see like roughly what happened and how I built things up. I ended up painting this very differently than I painted the other five, so it's not really a great example, but it's the only one I've got a recording of. But I kind of like how it turned out in the end. So I really hope you enjoy seeing how this one all came together and I'll come back after you've seen the process and we'll talk about the last few days of Inktober. I really hope you enjoy it. See you in a sec.
so finally, now you've seen how that one works out, I'm going to talk about the last couple. So, the last few native owls of the UK that you can find in the UK are the barn owl, which I really like how this one turned out, so obviously I didn't record it. <laughs> but no, I really like how this one turned out. I had this idea of doing the negative space and a circle of like just negative space and then trying as best I could to not overpaint the owl so that I can have this like really dark tone behind it. You can see where I roughed out the pencil and I ended up bringing that in to make it so that these two things are the highlight. And also just fun things that happen like when I was using the black watercolour and building it up, I really liked how certain fades were happening because I was being very careful around the edge. Obviously I was over watering, but that made this nice effect where it kind of like almost like, how do I say it, like it lightened the tone in this area. And then obviously again, I'm building up this level around the edge, but not wanting my watercolour to dry out too much so that I can keep it as flat as possible, as you can see in this area here. But as this happens, I'm like working my way around the paper, as you can see as I painted it. And then we get this space and when I saw that there was this area here where it was very bright I was like okay I don't want the, this brightness here to detract and then end up making this area look too heavy so what I did is I dry brushed the paint right at the end and I gave it this kind of scratchy texture here and I think that it does kind of do the effect I was hoping it would do of showing this like almost like tree line effect. Obviously the tree line would probably be about here-ish, but I think it's nice to see this like tiny little moments where something was actually not perfect <laughs> when painting, but you can end up making an interesting effect and maybe telling a bit of a story that you didn't initially mean to tell. I liked as well with this one, I did use my white pen the dreaded white pen, but I kind of told myself, look, you can only put it on the white wingtips because they have like little white dots on the wingtips, barn owls, so I really wanted to just kind of keep it very light dim, very light, light amounts of light in the whole thing because I really didn't want to distract from that in many ways. And yeah, I think it kind of worked out quite nicely that I think you've got some interesting textures. And yeah, I think for just one watercolour piece, it went all right. <laughs> so the final native owl that's kind of not native, kind of is now, uh, it was actually reintroduced, well, reintroduced? Introduced a few hundred years ago into the UK, but I mean, it now lives here all the time, so it's native, isn't it? So this is the little owl and kind of like, like drawing back, if you've watched this much of the video, God bless you, but <laughs> if you've watched this far, the Tibetan sand fox, how I was saying about how it had such like an expressive look to it and such like, just, yeah, it's just a character in itself. You don't have to do any work as an artist for something that wonderful. I feel like that a lot with the little owl. They have got such expressive eyes. Um, I mean, I know all owls have expressive eyes, but the little owl especially has this real grumpy, frumpy little face. And I don't know what it is. It must be a grumpy, frumpy faced animal thing that I like. But yeah, I knew I wanted to create this and do this as the last one. And again, I was kind of like reflecting on that shape that I did with the other one. So I went instead this time with this rectangular shape and I blocked that out and then I tried to create the background there so he would break out in front of it but you would still get this feeling of the environment behind him too and I think it's kind of nice, it's kind of a fun idea and a fun way of creating a background without having to, you know, completely fill the entire thing and then possibly because so many of these native animals, they're, you know <laughs> I want to say designed, <laughs> but they, you know, they have developed over time to blend so beautifully into the background. If you do go too detailed with the background, you are going to lose it just by proxy. So I think it's nice to try and break it up and bring it into the foreground in this way. I think it's kind of a fun graphical way of doing it. And yeah, I'd recommend it if you're looking for a way to illustrate natural animals in their habitats. It's kind of a nice workaround between the two. Ah, oh, okay! Finally! My voice is going! It's the last day! It's day 31 of the month! It's the final day! That's it! It's my last day of the book! Um, yeah, I mean, I'd run out of owls <laughs> and I wasn't really sure how I wanted to end it. 
But my main thought was we've kind of gone through all these different projects over the month. We've touched on so many different ideas. It would be nice to try and bring a lot of these different styles and images and projects and stories and everything together in this final image for Halloween. So what I did is I sketched up a rough of everything that I wanted. It's interesting doing something like this because if you go in lots of different directions style wise and then try and bring them all together, you've kind of got to ask yourself whether you're going to retain style or you're going to merge style. I decided to merge style um, because I'm lazy <laughs> and not as thoughtful. So what I did is I kind of brought all the different styles together, the brushwork, the line pen, the textures, the watercolor, it all comes together and I just kind of designed this around this like text. I used like a font text and overlaid that so I'd have a guide because I'm not great at typography or line art. But I knew I wanted to have some kind of text on the work. And then, yeah, I just built up these kind of different layers and I was thinking about how I wanted things to interact, how I wanted stuff to place on the page. And yeah, again, it was thinking about colours as well. I was going quite a few varied colours, but I wanted to try and mute them. So the green I made more blue so that it would match with this side. And again, the orange isn't too yellow. It's a much warmer colour again to bring tones together. So yeah, it's interesting a piece like this. You have to think about a lot of stuff and it doesn't look like you do, <laughs> but it's enjoyable to do when this is there. And I had a lot of fun working on all these different projects and thinking through this. And I did actually manage to record this. So I'm going to leave one last time just to show you how this one went. And then I'm just going to give like a final thoughts, blah, blah, blah thing at the end. Thank you if you have lasted this long. And I really hope you enjoy seeing how this final piece was put together. that you used to go up on Mulholland Drive and park yeah, every night. and visualize seeing yourself as... Yeah, I would visualize... Uh, yeah, I would this visualize, is when you were broken for. You know, right, having directors interested in me and people that I respected uh, um, saying, you know, I like your work or whatever that is. And, and uh, I would visualize things coming to me that I wanted or whatever. Drive home and think, well, I do have these things. And they're out there, I just don't have a hold of them yet, but they're out there. I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years, or three years, maybe. And, uh, and uh, I dated at Thanksgiving 1995, just before 
first Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make $10 million dollars and dollars and dollars and dollars. So yeah, that was it. Happy Halloween. That's it all over. A whole other year of Inktober. We've gone four years into it. And yeah, that's how it all came together. Oh, thank you, Emily, again. It has been a lot of fun to do. I know I might have sounded a bit tired by the end of that, but it's been a long month and it's been a lot of work. I mean, I don't want to think how much time it took. And the whole book is watered. You wouldn't believe. Look at it. It's like... <laughs> Peeling off his back, but I would say the paper's lasted really, really well for what it is. And yeah, I'm just gonna flick through quickly, but yeah, I really enjoyed telling this red panda story and following him through. I think it would be a lot of fun to revisit this digitally, maybe one day, and just play a bit more with the character. Maybe it's a future project again, but it was a lot of fun to think through this idea and 
you know, I've had it for a couple of years, that idea, and I haven't touched it. So it was nice to actually get a moment to do it, even if it was quick. So this one, which I had a lot of fun working through this idea, it was kind of going back to brush pens, which I did like two years ago for Intoba, brush pen and watercolour. But this time I kind of had a lot of the lessons that I learned through that month and some new ones to learn as well, as you can see. <laughs> but it was good, it was a really good and fun thing to do and I enjoyed telling the story of the Swamp Witch a lot. And then as we went into the fur project, we had this work of just being cute, 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 cute overload, thinking of some nice sweet characters, kind of going into the style that I'm a bit more comfortable with, I kind of do a bit more often, and I think it did create some of my favourite pieces Overall this month I think there's some really interesting work in here and work that I could see expanding on I guess in the future. I said that one, that's awful. <laughs> and um, finally, the owls. I just love drawing natural animals. I think that working on native animals and native species would be a really fun project to look into and I think going into 2021 that might be something that I go into at some point of just maybe doing a slight characterization of natural animals, I think would be nice. I'd like to hear your thoughts. And yeah, that's it. Happy Halloween, everyone. This is a list of all of the Inktober prompts that I used this month. I've got them all here. These were all the tags of them. Loads of different artists to talk about, but I'll just keep it up on screen for a second so you can have a look. Yeah, I just put it all with the different things so that I would have something to flick through and look into every day to keep me going so that I didn't go crazy. And yeah, that's it. That's the whole month of Inktober 2020. I really hope you enjoyed seeing it. I'm going to have to put the book back together again because it's broken. No! Okay, but yeah. I'll talk to you again soon. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope I didn't put you completely to sleep, but if I did, I hope you have sweet dreams. Have a lovely time, and I will see you again soon for Prop Squad, and also to talk about this book and the Vivia watercolors at some point, just in case you were thinking of buying some. I really hope you're doing well, and I will chat to you again soon. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you.